welcome back, and I'm here to talk to you about the Hubble constant this week. Now, in 1920, uh, American astronomer Edwin Hubble noticed something funny happening. He noticed that galaxies beyond our own Milky Way were actually moving away all together. So then he started to notice that galaxies that were furthest away were moving faster than galaxies that were closer to us. This was the evidence that the universe is expanding. Banding. Now this was the birth of the Hubble constant, and the Hubble's constant is what's based on the Hubble's law. So the Hubble's law is that the speed in which the galaxy is moving away from us is exactly proportional to the distance in which it's already at. Both the speed and the distance are going to be the same exact number. So now, astronomers today have calculated this value of the Hubble's constant to be about 72 kilometers per second per megaparsec. And a megaparsec is just about a million parsecs. And a parsec is actually equal to 3,262,000 light years. That's a really long way. Galaxies move away from us at this speed. All throughout the 20th century, every astronomer thought that everything that we saw in the night sky was only part of our Milky Way galaxy. And it wasn't until about 1920 when the debate happened between two astronomers, Harlo Shapley and Heber Curtis. Now, Harlow Shapley thought that every single object in the night sky was indeed part of only our Milky Way galaxy. But then Heber Curtis said, no, spiral things that we see in the sky are not nebulae. They are actually separate galaxies. They are not part of our own galaxy. And then it wasn't until Hubble did some measurements, 100-inch Hooker telescope, Mount Wilson, to measure the light from the flickering stars in the Andromeda Nebula, now known to be a spiral galaxy very similar to the Milky Way. Hubble was able to work out just how far away these galaxies were by analyzing their stars or these Cepheid variables. And the way that you can figure out just how far a star is, take this light for example. So you can see just how bright it is from the distance that it is from my computer right now. If it's a little bit further, it might actually appear to be dimmer. But another way that he measured was through its flickering patterns. And this would be nearby dust or gas that was actually um, in the galaxy. So by the amount of times that it would flicker, he would be able to measure the pattern in which this star is moving, and then he could measure its dimness or brightness because it does go dimmer and brighter. And by analyzing this constant pattern, he can then detect just how bright it is based on distance or how bright it is based on its natural luminosity. And once he actually figured out its brightness and he found out its distance, something really funny happened. This is then what changed our perspective on the universe. We thought that maybe these stars were part of the Milky Way galaxy, but it showed us that its distance was much further away than what we estimated our Milky Way galaxy size to be. This could only mean that it's not part of our Milky Way galaxy, but instead part of a whole new galaxy. It was part of the Andromeda galaxy. And this is what first showed us that there were other galaxies out there, that our galaxy was not the whole universe, and the universe is much bigger than we thought. Now, while Hubble was trying to measure the galaxies that were near us and just how far away they were, he started to notice something really funny again. He noticed that the light was mainly in the red shift, and the red shift, as opposed to blue shift, just means that light is moving and objects are moving further away from you. Just like the Doppler shift, when you hear a nearby car, you hear it coming closer, and so the um, sound waves are actually compressing as it's getting closer to your ear. It's just like with light, when light is moving closer, it's, um, it's blue shifting, and so its light waves are getting more compressed, and the frequency is getting higher if you're talking about cars. So then when it starts to move away, the wavelengths are actually getting longer and further away. So with this, he was noticing that all galaxies are moving further away from the Milky Way. What is up with that? Not only are they moving further away from us, they're moving faster further away from us. So those that are actually further away, the further you look, they are moving a lot faster, so they are accelerating. So now we're like, wait, why is the universe accelerating at such a fast rate? I don't know, this is crazy. Okay, maybe it has something to do with the dark matter and the dark energy. And yet, the only galaxies that were moving closer to us are the galaxies that are within our own galaxy cluster, like the Andromeda galaxy, is moving towards us as opposed to away from us. Okay. And another annoying thing was that the galaxies weren't even just like all moving away from us. It wasn't like Mean Girls and they were all just like running away from you because they don't like you. But it was like 
each galaxy was moving away from the other galaxy near it. So every single galaxy was just expanding away from all other galaxies. So it was like the universe was like inflating. Take this balloon for example. I marked um, a bunch of tiny little dots on here. Let's just say that those represent uh, galaxies that are nearby one another. And when I blow into this balloon, it's, you're going to see inflation. You're going to see um, what exactly is happening based on the Hubble's constant. You're going to see that the galaxies will be moving away from one another. The expansion of the universe began in the Big Bang, which I'm sure many of you guys heard about, even if it's referring to the TV show The Big Bang Theory. Uh, the Big Bang it was the explosion that created the universe, and ever since then, galaxies have been completely flying apart from one another. In 1990, we launched the Hubble Space Telescope along Space Shuttle Discovery, and it takes these beautiful images, as you guys have probably seen, absolutely everywhere. If you guys haven't heard about the Hubble Space Telescope, definitely Google it. There are some gorgeous, beautiful images that um, it's 2.4 meter long uh, telescope and set of dozens of cameras actually takes. It has been able to measure and take photos of the, some of the most distant galaxies of up to 13.4 billion light years away, which is right now what we estimate as to be the size of our cosmic microwave background which is just the scale of the universe um, so we actually are able to see galaxies that formed at the very beginning of um, our universe and some of the faintest galaxies that are the furthest away have these crazy blob-like shapes because they've merged over two different galaxies at least um, and so they all have these like really funny shapes and when you actually look at it you're looking into the past you're actually looking at what was there when the universe first formed. And because the universe is continuously expanding, based on the Hubble's law, we were able to trace it all the way back and calculate just how old the universe is. And right now that number is about 14 billion light years. And light years I know can be measured um, in of course distance, but it also can be measured in time. And this is because a light year is exactly what the name is. It is the amount of years in which it takes for light to travel, so that's why it can be measured in both time and distance. And so many of you guys might start thinking, well, if the universe is going to constantly be expanding, wouldn't it eventually blow up like my balloon did? Well, the answer right now would be no. There are multiple theories, though, that um, can debate against this. I truly do believe that no, it's not possible for the universe to eventually expand and blow up. Um, and this is just because there are so many parts in the universe where there is a, an equal amount of collapsing of matter than there is a forming of matter. Like there's dark matter and there's dark energy. And then you also have regular matter. So then you have um, planets, you have stars, you have uh, nebulae, galaxies. But then you have stars that when they die, they release a ton of matter and a lot of them also collapse into black holes. And black holes are known for absorbing matter and they are just like a pocket of just goodness that just absorbs it. But then, you know, based on um, uh, the Hawking radiation, uh, which was a recent theory by Stephen Hawking, uh, shows that possibly there may be actually um, a release of some energy and matter and light that comes out of black holes. But as far as now, we do know that there is a good amount of matter that is forming and matter that is collapsing. So, you know, at least for now, we do believe that the universe will not expand to the point where it'll explode, but it will keep expanding because we do have an infinite amount of matter that is forming and a lot of matter that is also collapsing. So, well, that concludes on uh, this video talking about the Hubble constant. So next time you guys go to sleep, just remember that, that the universe is constantly expanding. It is expanding at such a fast, accelerated rate. And there's just so much out there. So, like, anytime you're bummed out about, like, missing your train or your bus or you're stuck in traffic, I know it's annoying, but, like, it's so nothing compared to so many other phenomenal, amazing things out there. So yeah, that's just kind of how I look at it. It's what gets me by every day. So, and sorry about the sirens, if you guys hear that, as you know, I am located in New York City, so there's always sirens everywhere. Um, but once again, thank you guys so much for watching uh, my channel. And yeah, okay, see you guys next time on Astro Athens. Whee! Bye guys.